but we'll be glad to take care of it for the client either way. We want a happy client and we want her to we want roof problems to go away. Nobody likes sitting under a leaky roof. This is a warranty call. We've had a little bit of an issue on it. I'm going to just double check and make sure we're taking care of the customer in the right way. There were some questions about what was warranted in the roof. And so we have a lifetime warranty on the workmanship. I want to make sure that what the issue is, are there's a leak around a window, which is kind of unusual since there's nothing in the area of the window. So I'm real curious about it. And some, sometimes I need to go out and look at them myself. So I'm dressed casually today because I had no, no other meetings. This is a repeat client, good friend. So come join me. Look at the pretty flowers. So there's a little leak above this window. And there was a leak on the other side of the chimney. So it's completely unrelated. I'm certain of that. Let's, let's take a look back here. And what I can see is a dip in the roof already before I get up there. So the question is, is what's causing that dip in the roof? Is there a failure in the decking? I did find out that the chimney has been painted recently. That means somebody's been up there, so it is possible that, that something has given way and that that can cause a leak. So we're just gonna see if we see any signs of it and more importantly, what the solution would be. And we've already had it retarred and at the area of the flashing, I already know that that's been done by, by our roofer. And so it could be that that's taking care of everything. We've resealed the shingles, but I just want to make sure there's nothing obvious that we, we couldn't see or do to make this go away for sure this time. Roofing can be tricky though. Sometimes you, you're 100% sure you got it and there's something unusual in there. I've been fooled. If you've done roofing long enough, you're eventually going to be fooled by it. It's going to trick you. It's going to, uh, Eat your lunch one day. This so I'm stepping on it to see if there's there's a little bit of movement in here, and it is definitely got a sag. This this feels weak, but sometimes the plywood is just naturally weaker in certain areas than others. Maybe we do a counter flashing on this. The siding's in good shape. The trims have been replaced. It'd probably be best not to not to mess with this good siding. It's a stucco tempered hardboard siding or fiber cement, I can't tell for sure. Might be fiber cement, but this fiber cement trim, so it's been resided, and it might be best just to put a counter flashing just to make 100% sure it's not coming in from the old flashing that is underneath that siding. I need to find out when this siding was replaced because that can change everything. Now I want to see if there's anything happening like an exposed nail that would contribute to a, a leak right above the window because they can travel a good ways. This is interesting. Something's happened here. Something has definitely happened here. Something oil has gotten on here. These are disintegrating. Look at this. If all of that was done after after we did the roofing, then that would contribute to the leak. If it was done before we did it, then we're just going to have to put a counter flashing in there because that flashing is giving us a problem now without a doubt. So let's see what we can find out when I go and talk to the homeowner. But either way, we're going to help this problem go away. We, I think we've narrowed it down now. We'll go ahead and get this thing out of the way. A little recap on what we saw up there. We were trying to make sure that the resealing of the shingles around the chimney is actually doing the job, that there's no other reason contributing to the leak either at the chimney or above the window. And I've definitely seen now that there's a reason for the leak above the window. It's perfectly in line with the window, though, and we found that there has been oils that have been left on the roof and they're deteriorating the shingles itself. They're literally crumbling. And that's allowing moisture to get in there and travel down, so I have no doubt in knowing why it's leaking above a window. When these windows are so well covered, the only thing it could be doing is coming in from the roof. So now we know why. There's a, there's a, there's a 
deterioration right above the area of the roof. The second thing is that shingle, we've, the, the chimney, actually has nails that are penetrating the flashing. When water rushes down beside a nail flashing, and travels in, it starts to put hydraulic pressure and it starts to work it up in against the L flashing. They're siding over it, but it's, it can only, that's, that flashing is supposed to be about three inches tall on that end. And so that allows for some moisture to get up, but never get behind that flashing. But when you have a nail down within an inch of the bottom, that water presses up in there, that hydraulic pressure forces it to follow the nail hole. And it's actually following it in and it's following it through the flashing. So that's a problem. And if, if it doesn't stop with the, with the resealing of the shingles because we found a little soft spot up there, then that means we're gonna have to put a new flashing on that chimney. If they did this siding work after we did the, the work on the uh, chimney on the roof, then that means that somebody nailed into that flashing and thus it's, it's voided the warranty. And we'll need to go back and do a different fix if we can. But we can still do the counter flashing either way. It's just that it won't be free this time if, if that's what, indeed if it was not our fault. But we'll be glad to take care of it for the client either way. We want a happy client and we want, her to, we want roof problems to go away. Nobody likes sitting under a leaky roof. So that's why I'm here. Sometimes you have to look at these by yourself. You just got to go see what other people might be missing. And it seems to be an obvious reason in both of these why this is happening. But we'll, we'll do a little further research and then we'll get a, get a solution for this client. I'm in my brother's truck today because mine didn't start and I took the Hellcat and then I figured out I was gonna have to go on a warranty call though that I wanted to go on a warranty call so I had to throw a little ladder in here fortunately my brother works with me so he let me use his truck but now I got to go deliver his truck back because he's got to go see Mr. Farakles, our civil engineer, and deliver some plans so that we can get a plan stamped, engineered stamp on a plan for a slab for our final inspection. The city requires engineered plans on all foundations. So they'll let you do it any time. We, just, we just have to get it stamped. And he's already reviewed the plans, but anyway, nice truck. It's a King Ranch. My wife doesn't know that my truck didn't start. She gives me grief if I have any problems with my old truck, but I love my old truck, my 97 Ford with 1,000 miles on it. It hits 51,000, 351,000 this week, so I need another oil change every 5,000 miles. I like that truck. It's nice. The seat backs up when you open the door. It's modern. Oh, I gotta give it back to Mike, to my younger brother Mike. If you ever meet Mike, ask him if he's my older brother. That really gets him. Okay. He's here in the truck. Okay, thanks, thanks for letting me use it. Have a good weekend. All right, you too.